electric car die because of battery technology? Did EVs really not have enough range? And did car companies use the best batteries available? Battery technology at that time was lead-acid batteries and allowed the car to go 60 miles. If you started out on a trip knowing that you were going to go dead in 60 miles, you'd be nervous about making the trip. People think that they need a car that will go 300 miles and be able to charge it up or refuel it in five minutes. For virtually you know, 90, 95 percent of your driving, you really don't need that. You need a vehicle that will go at least 60 miles or so, and that way your, your daily commute is covered. For those who wanted greater range from an EV, 100 miles or more, a better battery already existed, developed by a well-known inventor working in Troy, Michigan, about 30 miles from General Motors headquarters. I'm standing. And Iris. Of Shinsky. Sure. I think you shouldn't do it that way. You should say it's Dan Oshinsky and I'll say Larry Don't do it that way. That's funny. With over 200 patents to his name, Stan Oshinsky had pioneered a new battery, and GM purchased controlling share of his company. We were chosen over 60 different uh, big companies like Westinghouse and others who wanted to uh, win the race to make the batteries that would uh, be used in pure electric cars. And we were chosen because we had a battery. And uh, uh, to us, putting it in a car was not the most gigantic thing. What did we were supposed to do? But you uh, did sort of expect champagne and roses. I expected champagne and roses. They when I said that we were going to put in a paragraph into a newspaper that said we had achieved this. I really expected congratulations to flow in. And then I knew that something was different when the opposite happened. Oshensky was censured for publicizing his battery advances without permission and asked not to run advertising in national publications. The EV-1 debuted with a weaker battery. It would be another two years before Oshinsky's batteries were installed in the EV-1. The first version of the EV-1 had defective Delco batteries in them and they kept failing. So that was GM's failure on those batteries. Once they put good batteries in, they didn't have any problems. Ultimately, GM sold its share in Oshinsky's company to an unlikely buyer. Then, when the nickel metal hydride batteries were improved so that they're now lasting longer than the life of the car and cheaper than an engine, Chevron Texaco stepped in and purchased control from General Motors of Oshinsky technology. The oil companies do not feel threatened by battery technology because they effectively crushed it. The, the, you know, the electric car is kind of an interesting case study. I mean, it, it, it was such an abysmal failure that I think there are a lot of people involved in the initial decision making are trying to are, are pointing fingers at, at whose responsibility it was. To Basra and all Iraq comes good news with the opening of a new oil field. The pipeline runs across the desert to the Persian Gulf at Fayal. There, tankers load up with the precious fuel the world needs so badly. Yes, it's a big day for Iraq, and there's a feast to celebrate. Sheep stuffed with rice and a host of other good things. But that's only the first of the good things that will come to Iraq, thanks to oil. Oil companies have rarely shied away from global issues, but why did they lobby so hard to build public opposition to the electric car in California? I find it difficult to rationalize why um, the oil industry got so intimately involved in this other than maybe they saw it as a threat to uh, what I would call the monopoly they had on, on providing the transportation fuel. There's no question the people who uh, control the marketplace today, the oil companies, have a strong incentive to discourage alternatives uh, except the alternatives that they themselves control and you know just as General Motors 40 50 years ago bought up the trolley systems and shut them down uh, the oil companies have opposed the creation of an electric infrastructure I, I differ strongly with that we, we did not kill the electric car the petroleum industry did not kill the electric car what killed the electric car was antiquated technology it's a good example and something that we should not repeat, an example that we need to avoid. There's still a roughly a trillion barrels worth of oil in the Earth's crust. And if you figure that the average price of that subsequent oil will be $100 a barrel, that's $100 trillion worth of business yet to be done. 
However, at some point when an alternative is good enough, people will snap over. Uh, and that's what the oil companies fear the most. We use 280 million gallons of gasoline a week in California. Right now the price is like 220. Well, a year ago it was, it was 120. Okay, there's a dollar more a gallon. Somebody's making $280 million more a week this year. It's the same gas, the same pipeline, the same refineries. The profits are outstanding. What the oil companies feared is that electric vehicles would, would become successful six years from now. What the automobile companies feared was that they'd be losing money on electric vehicles in the next six months. Even as car companies made electric cars, they fought them at every step. What was their motive? Why were they so determined to take them off the road? I mean, I think in the beginning, General Motors didn't believe the car was going to catch on. I don't think they thought they'd ever have to worry about something like a conspiracy to keep it from happening. They hated the mandate. They hated it so much that they ended up not even really wanting to be in the business of EVs. What I frankly detected was a huge resentment about being told what type of motor vehicle had to be made. And it became a fight of principle rather than one of trying to uh, actually technologically solve the problem. I do know that uh I was surprised at some of the stances they took in Sacramento in arguing. End of comment. In a confidential 1995 memo, the American Automobile Manufacturers Association sought to hire a PR firm to manage a so-called grassroots and educational campaign to create a climate to repeal the mandate. The challenge, according to the document, was greater consumer acceptance of electric vehicles. Why would the car companies campaign so hard against their own creation? I made the case at the General Motors board that the reason for the EV1 was to give General Motors a very big head start in how you transform electricity into the drive power for the car. And we give them two, three years lead. And in my judgment, it did. But my frustration was they did not capitalize on the lead. And the reason, which was discussed at the board, was that there was not a profit seen to be coming out of either electric cars or hybrids. They could not understand how Toyota could possibly make a profit out of the Prius, for example. They were going to lose their shirt. And as evidence have shown, uh, I don't think Toyota is losing their shirt. If law...